Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for being here. Uh, my name is Luca Ceresoli, and as an embedded Linux engineer, I've been working for several years on BuildRoot uh, in the past, getting to know it quite well and became a contributor. Uh, last year, I've moved to AIM Sportline, where I'm designing the next generation of dashboards, data loggers, and cameras for motorsports. And uh, in that company, Yocto was being used, so I started to learn the new tool, and it was a big effort because it's so different from BuildRoot even when you have to do pretty much the same things. So here are the most interesting uh, experiences I gather from that in the hope that they'll be useful for those of you who have to switch from one project to the other. Uh, okay, so first of all, this talk is not a tutorial. Uh, you're not supposed to learn the tools now. Uh, this is not a feature comparison to help you choose the better product for you. If you need one, there are several. Uh, there is a talk, a blog entry, some articles, so check those out. They are very interesting, and those are very fair comparisons, I think. Uh, so the conclusion of all of them is that both tools have advantages and disadvantages, and even more important, each of them is better than the other in several relevant use cases. So this is probably the reason they still coexist and each of them is actively used, developed, and so on. Uh, so uh, just comparing them on the technical side shows uh, one very important similarity. They both maintain a uh, graph of dependencies and use that to build the various steps where each step has instruction to, be, to do something uh, on top of, the, uh, the, of its dependencies. That's pretty much all for the similarities, uh, technically speaking, because they are implemented using completely different tools. Uh, BuildRoot is built using uh, on, on, on top of two big pillars, which are the kconfig configuration system from the kernel, which you probably already know. Uh, this is used to tell BuildRoot what we want it to do, so to configure it. And then it, it uses the even more well-known make tool to do the actual build. Um, so uh, uh, Yocto is completely different. It uses a single tool called BitBake, uh, which is pretty much used only for that purpose, I think. Um, and it is uh, tailored to that use, and it has its own language. Uh, it doesn't have a real configuration engine, so configuration happens through uh, source files, uh, but we'll see more on that later. Uh, another important difference is BuildRoot does, it's focused on embedded Linux devices, so uh, most typically they use a root file system and they upgrade the entire root file system for several good reasons. Um, and so what it does is build a kernel, a bootloader, a rootFS, uh, as well as a toolchain and so on. So it directly builds the root file system. Um, Yocto instead is meant to build an entire distribution and so what it does is it builds uh, packages, uh, IPKG, RPM, DPKG, whatever, and you can use those to put them on a package feed on, on a server, and devices can connect and uh, do things like APT install to install packages with dependencies. So it's really a distribution. And actually, uh, it can also produce the same thing as BitRoot, so uh, kernel, bootloader, toolchain, and most important, the root file system as a sort of byproduct of packages. So to build a root file system, it just creates an, an empty directory and installs a list of packages into it. So this is very different. Uh, the goal of this talk is to cover uh, the uh, topics that exist in both, file, in both uh, build systems. So I will not talk about packages. Uh, I will talk about the root file system um, because it's tuned for embedded devices strictly. Um, and of course, I will speak only about th uh, topics I have some experience with in both build systems. Uh, yet, uh, even with those limitations, uh, the list of topics is really huge. Uh, it will not fit in 40 minutes. So uh, these, are, these are the topics that I covered uh, in my slides. Uh, so how you bootstrap a project from zero, uh, naming differences, how the two tools name the same things in different ways. Uh, 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 basics on writing recipes, uh, layers, and some what's similar in BuildRoot, uh, building and commanding a build, uh, understanding what's going on under the hood, uh, 
customizing the output that is generated, especially the root file system, and finally, and more advanced section on uh, uh, working on recipes. So I won't be able to cover all of them, so if you have any topic that you are more interested in, you can raise your hand and ask now, so I will focus on that mostly. Okay, so I'll switch to my uh, default schedule, which uh, goes mostly on the topics that are, that at least that were less obvious to me to learn. Okay, first thing to uh, set up a new project from zero, uh, well, uh, it's all covered in the tutorials and manuals, so I will go very, very quick. The main difference is build root, and the concept is you have a unique repo with build root, uh, pretty much like the Linux kernel, uh, while uh, Yocto has several layers. So you just clone one repository to start working with build root. Uh, with Yocto, there is one repo, which is called Pocky, which collects the basic tools and the most uh, uh, widely used recipes, uh, so you can use it for a reference design, for, for a reference build for uh, uh, like Beagle Bomb Black. But if you're doing a real project, most likely you will need at least the open embedded layer, uh, which has a huge list of recipes for a lot of pieces of software. Um, and probably other layers will be useful. Uh, maybe one from your system on chip vendor, uh, maybe one for additional software like Qt5 or many, many others. You should just go on the layer index uh, site, I see the URL there. Uh, it's very useful, it uh, has a list of many, many um, layers that you can uh, use with all the information about them. Um, okay, so uh, after that you have to configure the build system to tell it what to do and uh, with uh, build root you have kconfig so it, you can ask it to show the available co default configurations which are minimal booting configs for many boards. You just load that configuration and you're ready. Or if you want to start from scratch you just enter menu config and the basic you have to tell it is uh, the kind of, of, uh, ha of processor, so architecture, and DNS, and so on, uh, and the tool chain you want, optionally. And then you have to tell it where to find a working kernel and a working bootloader for your uh, target, which is probably from uh, your system on chip vendor or mainline. Um, and then you have to tell it which dev configuration to build when, when which device tree to build. And that's it. Uh, so here's how you configure a, a kernel. Um, with the Octo, uh, you first thing to start after cloning is you must uh, execute this script. Uh, we in it build env. Uh, you must source it. So there is a dot. Hope you see it. And then you should look in uh, your SOC uh, vendor uh, layer uh, for a configuration for your board or a similar board, and then set that into the machine variable so it knows it, you want to build for that machine. Okay, uh, running the build is just a matter of calling make for build root, and it will start all of its process. With bait bake, you have to supply an argument. Um, you can start with core image minimal, which is an image with just the, the basic to start. So both of them will build a minimal system boot into BusyBox. Okay, uh, of course the two systems do uh, many uh, of the same things, but uh, they name them differently. So uh, the common thing is they maintain, as I said, a graph of dependencies uh, between packages, but for each package, they also have a set of sub uh, targets, of sub steps, to uh, accomplish, like configuring, installing, building, of course. Um, so the naming is, uh, the, the word package is used in build root where the word recipe is used in Yocto. So it's pretty much the same thing. It's a description of how, of how to build a package. Um, in both cases, you can just call either make or bit bake uh, with an argument that is a, the name of the package and they will build every, uh, the, the package along with all of its dependencies. That's pretty much the same. Uh, the uh, com packages compiled for the development host natively are calling host name of the package in build root and package dash native in Yocto, so it's exactly the same thing. Uh, the sub steps needed to uh, build each package are uh, called just steps usually in build root. There is no uh, a formal name, while in Yocto they are called uh, tasks. And tasks are really uh, First class citizen in the, in Bitbake, uh, they are in a different namespace. So, uh, for example, you can uh, 
ask it to just run up to the configure step for some packages with dash c configure while build root uh, creates uh, a new make target for each of these uh, steps. So you will run like make name of the package dash configure name of the package dash build and so on. But it's the same thing more or less. Uh, okay, here it's uh, a picture of how the default uh, normal steps or tasks are organized in the two build system. They are very similar except for the naming. So source becomes fetch uh, and so on. Uh, Okay, uh, the build step is kind of, of ambiguous because in build root it means run the build, the compilation itself, so before, uh, without installing, uh, while in Yocto it is in a special uh, task, meaning build everything related to a package. Uh, it's what happens when you do bit bake space name of the package. Okay, installing has two different steps in build root to install in staging and to install uh, on the, uh, on the uh, target um, root file system. Uh, while Yocto managed this internally, uh, so there is only one install step. And finally, the, what Yocto calls a deploy step is install images in, uh, in build root. That's to install uh, just images not in the root file system. Okay, this is just a recap of what I said with naming one by one as a reference table. And along with the name of the files where these happen to be implemented in the two systems. Okay, uh, it's impossible to talk about Yocto without talking about layers. Uh, so just a, a, a few notes, uh, you, uh, when you start a new, a new project, there is a default uh, layers file that is created for you with a, a simple list of paths to the, to the layers. This is the default, uh, it has three layers, and then uh, you can add more uh, as, as you want. Um, I suggest you use a relative path, not an absolute path, otherwise it won't be portable with your colleagues, for your colleagues, for example, um, or onto different directories. Uh, okay, um, and what happens with layers is a recipe uh, for a package is defined as a .bb file in one of the, uh, of the layers, but uh, then uh, other layers on the higher levels can have a BB append file. So there can be zero or more BB append files. And what Bitbake does at the beginning while parsing your, your code, it will just pretty much um, um, concatenate the files, uh, appending one after the other. Uh, so the, the final recipe will be a concatenation of them. And your highest level BB append will come uh, last and can change what has been set in the previous files. Uh, uh, layers can, uh, are very powerful, but can also create some problems, especially uh, some of them are, have a very good quality, some are, have not. And, but most important, uh, there can be conflicts, which is uh, the, the, your build will fail. Uh, this happened to me, for example, with GStreamer, where, where a vendor layer wanted to implement their own video codec hardware and so tweaked uh, on the GStreamer recipes with the BB append, other, uh, which is not compatible with what other layers do. And so in those cases, my personal uh, algorithm to fix the problem is, if at all possible, fix the offending code in my BB append. Maybe it's just a matter of changing one or two variables. If that's not enough, you can just blacklist one recipe uh, so it will not be considered by Bitbake and then you uh, re-implement what's needed on your own layer. And finally, if the whole layer itself is creating problems, just don't use it and copy over uh, the part that is useful in your layer. Uh, so there are, these are possibilities to escape these kind of problems. Okay, uh, and finally, you're not supposed to modify the existing layers, but you should create your own top level layer where you add all of your customization specific to your product and maybe fixes to lower level layers. Um, and uh, everything should go in there. Okay, uh, build root has mechanisms uh, which doesn't really have a nice name, but br2 external is the kconfig variable to enable it, and uh, it's also how it's usually called. Uh, it is somewhat similar to layer technically, but it's uh, simpler. Uh, it's also simpler in its goal. Its goal is not uh, to give something that can 
do whatever to change every recipe, but just to keep your own local customization in a separate place. So you are developing a product and you have your own packages, your own board configs and so on. You can keep them in a separate place. Uh, if you find bugs in or problems or missing features in a beetroot recipe, uh, the uh, policy that you're suggested to follow is to submit your in improvement upstream and then it will be part of the whole build route. Uh, okay, this is how you use it. So you just have to call make uh, whatever, uh, like make menu config with uh, BR2 external and the list of your of your um, external trees. And that's it, that's saved in your dev config so you don't have to type it again every time. Uh, what happens basically uh, is the top level build root make file will include your own make files in your uh, external trees and the same happens with kconfig uh, files. So uh, it's all pretty much a part of a unique system then. So this is, in, in this sense, it is somewhat similar to layers. Okay, uh, writing recipes, I, I will mostly skip on this section because it's well covered in tutorials and manuals. Uh, I just wanted to highlight how uh, as a bird's eye view, it, uh, very, it looks very similar to this one. Uh, the syntax is different, but uh, with Bitroot and Yocto, in both cases, you are just telling where to download the code from, how to build, how to install, and that's pretty much the same you do with Yocto with a different syntax. Uh, okay, so uh, actually in, in build root you also have to define a kconfig file to uh, let your package be visible in menu config, but that's very simple, um, at least for normal packages. And okay, uh, in Yocto you have classes, so if you have an auto tools package, you don't have to re-implement everything uh, in the same way every time. There's a class doing all the basic stuff for you, uh, and it's extensible. Exactly the same happens in build root. The syntax is cleaner in, in Yocto. You do inherit auto tools, which is very intuitive. It is a bit less intuitive in build root, where there is this syntax, because that's based on make, and it uses make uh, features to implement uh, classes. They are called actually package infrastructures in build root, but each it is uh, used in the same way to implement packages. Okay, uh, if you use classes, but same applies to BD appends, you can uh, add code to be executed before or after every, uh, every task. So uh, you can have things like do install append and it will be appended to the existing do install step from your base class or base uh, BB uh, file. Uh, in build root, this is called hooks. So for every step, there is a pre hook and a post hook. So you can append code. Again, the syntax is a little bit more verbose, but you can do the same things. It's completely equivalent. Okay, uh, so here just an overview showing that both tools have uh, create several variables for you uh, to use in your recipes. Like, for example, PV is the package version in uh, Yocto and name of the package underscore version is the same thing in, uh, in build root. Uh, there is always the name of the package in front of variables for build root, and that is because uh, build root uses make, and in make, all variables are in a unique namespace, so they need to have a prefix. With Yocto, the these variables are assigned per recipe, uh, so uh, they don't need a prefix. It's a little more concise. Uh, there are variables to know who the various directory you have to work in, uh, the source and build here, and where you should install and install images. Uh, this mean a bit different things uh, in the two tools because build root installs uh, directly in the root file system while Yocto installs in a temporary directory, but that can change in the future and so you should not rely on that. Just use the variables and don't make assumptions is always the best thing to do. Okay, uh, finally you will need to add patches to uh, packages that you are not developing uh, directly. Um, so uh, in build root it is rather simple, you just have to put a dot .patch file uh, with a naming convention in the package directory, so it's going to look like this. In your package directory, there is the mk file, the kconfig file, and there is the patch here. In Yocto, it goes into a subdirectory, uh, at least that's the convention, but you also need to uh, set in source URI the, uh, the name of the patch, otherwise the file is ignored. 
Um, if the subdirectory does not have standard name, you also need to list in, in files extra paths, prepend. Okay, um, otherwise you can have a patch downloaded from uh, the internet. In this case, it is the name of the package and the score patch in build root, and you just mention it in source URI with uh, Yocto. Uh, finally, if you need to patch packages, which is quite likely, that are not in your layer but are in lower level layers, the uh, way in, uh, in Yocto is to just put them in your layers and mention them in a BBFN file, so that's pretty much the same mechanism as the first line in the table. Uh, with build root, there is a, a configuration variable called uh, global patch dir, so this should point to a directory where you have a, a tree of, uh, of patches, and it will pick p uh, patches from there uh, without having to change them in the build root uh, tree. And it can be used also, of course, with BR2 external. Okay, so, uh, Building and I mean invoking a build is uh, happens in a very similar way, although the syntax is different. So what uh, I've already shown some of the command lines. This is just an overview of other possibilities. Uh, maybe the com most complex one over here is uh, make busybox reconfigure, which is equivalent to make to bitbake dash uppercase c configure busybox, which means forced to rerun the reconfiguration and everything else to build that package. Uh, so they can do pretty much the same thing. Um, okay, uh, skipping on these. Uh, okay, with build root, you can do out of three builds if you want, like from the same build root code to test different configurations. You can just put them in different subdirectories just like you do for the kernel. And then you can launch two different uh, consoles and build in parallel the two uh, or three or more to see how a change in your source affects several, uh, several boards. Uh, this is not present, I think, in Yocto, but you achieve the same uh, probably in a better way using um, other techniques. So you can just run bitbake core image minimal and then bitbake my image uh, and it will build only the parts of my image that are not already built from the core image minimal. So it will recycle the builds uh, very effectively. And also you can change the machine then and build for a different machine and it will also recycle whatever is common. So the machine, if the machine is using the same target architecture, it will not reveal most of the code, uh, only the board dependent code. So you will save all, both on disk and on time. Okay, uh, dependency tracking is very different. Uh, build root keep, tr keeps track of uh, completed tasks using a stamp file. The stamp file is an empty file whose date matters. And uh, this is um, not covering all cases because if you like build a package, then change the configuration and it doesn't know it has to rebuild it because the stamp file is up to date. So in that case, you need to manually uh, rebuild uh, to, and to trigger a manual rebuild. Well, the, the most simple and safe way is just to run make clean. With make clean, it will then restart building everything. Of course, it takes more time. Uh, if you know what you're doing, like you know why just change something affecting this specific package, you can just reconfigure or rebuild that package and save a lot of time. So with some knowledge on the packages that you are having on your target device, this gets to be relatively simple in many cases. Okay, um, Yocto has a much more powerful mechanism, so it keeps an entire an, a hash of everything that is in the recipe. So uh, if you change one variable, one function in your uh, BB file, uh, then it notices uh, the uh, already built version has a diff was built with a different hash and it will rebuild it automatically along with all the dependencies. This is very powerful and handy. You don't have to think much about what you're rebuilding. <coughs> On the other hand, it forces you to rebuild things that at times might be unnecessary. Um, okay. Um, if you still want to force a build, you can do it with the dash F flag, which forces rebuilding a, a step even when uh, it is already built. Uh, useful for debugging. Okay, so uh, after finishing your build, you wonder where are your output files. Uh, it took me quite some time to understand with Yocto because it has a very deep and huge directory hierarchy. Well, with build root, it's very simple. There's the output directory, 
uh, it's the default name if you don't change it. Uh, it has a build subdirectory, and then there, there is a subdirectory which builds each package, uh, for example, BusyBox. Uh, while Yocto has a much uh, uh, deeper uh, hierarchy where uh, this is where you're working, the build here, and then well, uh, the tuple like uh, x86, uh, Linux, uh, blah, blah, and then the name of the package, the version, and then there are many directories. There are many because it does many more steps. Uh, it does out of three builds when possible, so you have source and uh, um, uh, build output. And then when you install, it doesn't install in the target file system, but in any in a directory called image. And then in with internal tasks, it takes from image and puts in package, and then in package splits, splitting uh, the um, development files and the files for the target documentation and so on. So it has several steps uh, that are useful to uh, inspect where your build uh, started going wrong, for example. Okay, uh, the root file system is generated with build root in the output slash target. So it, this is pretty much your final root file system, uh, more or less, uh, but uh, it's where you find uh, all of your files, basically. Uh, there is, in a, in a Yocto, there is no uh, concept of the root file system, but there are images, you can have multiple. So uh, they are pretty much like the regular uh, uh, recipes, although they are uh, they don't really build stuff, they just collect stuff. So in the same hierarchy as before, more or less, there is this core image minimal, and it has a subdirectory rootfs that contains your root file system, um, which is collected after building all packages. Okay, um, finally, the images that you really uh, deploy to your devices are uh, in output slash images with build root, and in, well, pretty much the same hierarchy, but uh, instead of work, it has a deploy here. So here are your images, uh, and they are more or less the same result now. So this is where you find them. Well, it, it, the Yocto hierarchy is a lot deep, so you lose a lot of your tab key, definitely. Uh, but at time, after some time, you get used to it. Okay, uh, this is to me a very important chapter because it is. Uh, it is where I spent like a lot of my time in understanding why I was seeing red, red text on my screen, the build was failing, and it's very important to understand what the tool is doing. Uh, you know, these tools are not minesweeper, they, are, they do a complex task, things may fail in many different ways, so you will definitely spend some time in scratching your head with a question. And so one of these questions is what uh, will the tool build and why does it build so much stuff? I just want busy box, it's building tons of packages. Well, uh, Buildroot has a neat uh, tool to do that. Uh, you just type make graph depends and it will produce a PDF with all the dependencies. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but there are two different shades of gray here. The dark gray is target packages, the light gray is host packages uh, that don't go on your device. Uh, so it's very easy here to understand why the tool is building, I don't know, uh, host uh, Zlib uh, because it's needed by somebody. Uh, and also useful to fine tune what goes on your target and to save space. Uh, if you only care about some of the information, you can filter them. Uh, there is uh, an environment variable to, which can do many things. Among these, exclude the host packages. So I just want to see what goes on my target. And then you can, um, where is it? Ooh, uh, make name of the package graph depends. It will only show the name of the, that package and its dependencies. Uh, so it's nice to see, okay, if I use this tool for implementing this feature, how many dependencies will it have? How much space will it take on my, on my device? Uh, I think there is no similar tool in Yocto. Well, there is one. Uh, it can generate a, a similar graph uh, in a dot file but it's not really usable. Uh, it takes hours to generate and then the, the, the graph is not really readable. Um, I think the closest thing is uh, Task Explorer, which does Task Dependency Explorer, which is invoked this way, bitbake-g-u task exp, and then the name of the package or word to see all the packages. And it 
it doesn't show uh, a graph, so it only shows for each item its dependencies and reverse dependencies. And it's also much more fine-grained because it shows tasks, not packages. So it, there's a, it shows a huge amount of information. It, it's not really easy to find out what you're looking for. Okay, uh, then uh, you want to understand what the tool is doing, uh, of course, and especially what went wrong when build fails. And so, well, build root by default shows a very verbose output. So I'm starting this uh, step and then the whole step output. Uh, and when things fail, typically the error is in the last few lines on your terminal. Uh, if you want a concise output, there's a utility script called brmake, which shows only the start of each task and a date and save everything into a log file. Um, Yocto has a different output. It shows in a, uh, in a very visual way uh, what is happening in this moment. So if you just turn your head and then look back into your screen, you don't know what happened in the meanwhile. Um, but it's very effective in saying what is happening at the moment. If you want a con sort of concise output, a uh, very stupid trick I found is just pipe it into cut. So it will show like I'm starting this, sta this task, I'm finishing this task, uh, which is also what happened probably in, uh, in your CI machines because it doesn't have a terminal. So it's more useful if you want to look after at what happened. Okay, and when something goes wrong, you can inspect the build logs. For each step, Yocto saves a, build, a separate build log. The, the, it's in one of those long directories, so uh, for the package, there is a temp directory with all the logs. It's very useful because you can inspect whatever happened. Um, but if you want to see the error happening live, then you can just rerun it with a dash V flag, which means verbose, and in that case, whatever is logged is also showed on screen. Okay, uh, and understanding what the tool is uh, thinking, I mean, I means uh, you wrote a recipe, you set a variable, and you thought it had an effect, but it doesn't, so why? Uh, so you can inspect the internal thinking of the tool uh, in build root using the print vars uh, feature. So you just, you can just uh, look at the second example, it's a typical usage, make dash s, you give a pattern and then print vars. It will show all variables starting with busybox. So if you don't find the variable you just set there, or maybe you have a typo or, anyway, you can see the value of each variable uh, after expansion. Uh, well, if you want a much more low level tool, uh, you can use directly make. Make uh, has this, this make dash q dash p um, means um, it prints the whole make database. It's a huge output where all variables are before expansion. So it's a lot harder to understand, but in some cases it could be useful. And it also shows the rules and the action it's, it would execute without executing. Uh, Yocto has a similar uh, possibility with the dash E flag. So bit bake dash E show only the global environment, the variables affecting all of the build uh, entirely. Um, if you pass a recipe name, it will show the variables and the function for, for that recipe, along with where they have been set. It is very useful, especially when a variable is set and modified in several different files, so you can see which file is actually uh, causing trouble to you. Okay, um, so that these are very important tools to understand what the the, the, the two build systems are doing. Okay, uh, now uh, I'd like to give you uh, some ideas about how you customize your root file system and your build output in general. Um, because, well, with a default build, you have a default system, but you don't sell uh, big old bones with a default BusyBox image. You sell products, so you want to customize stuff. And uh, for this, well, um, as I said, uh, BuildRoot has its configuration system with its configuration file. Uh, you use menu config to customize. And well, the command make save dev config uh, will overwrite your previous configuration with the, the current values. Uh, so um, if it's version, it's very handy. You are ready to commit it. Um, uh, with Yocto, the configuration actually goes into BB files, so th there is no separation, uh, no strong separation between configuration and build. Um, anyway, uh, the 
a layout that is probably quite common uh, is to well, define all of your uh, build, build option, the tool chain, the, especially your target machine in a configuration file in your top layer. Well, uh, you could use the conf slash local conf file in your build directory. It works, but it's not meant for that. It's meant for really local stuff. Um, but basically, you can choose where you put your file. And then uh, you can uh, set that. And um, you c the system configuration, so what th those options that affect generally the system must go in several places and uh, you have to look for them. And finally, uh, the, um, to add packages to your root file system, you use an image recipe, as I mentioned before. Okay, so uh, mm, adding a package in, uh, in build root is very simple. You just enter menu config, go into the packages submenu, and if it, it's, if it is implemented, you will find it there. It's very easy, you can search. Uh, and then if you removed or modified the configuration of some packages, you have to maybe clean and rebuild. Uh, if you, or anyway, uh, then you save your configuration and your package will be in your image. Um, with the Octo, uh, it, it is a bit different. There is no uh, menu, but you can ask Bitbake to print the list of all uh, the packages that it knows, so those that are in the layers you have enabled. Uh, with big bake layers show recipes. Um, if you don't find it there, you can go again on the layer index. It also indexes uh, recipes in layers. And so you can uh, just look for a recipe and see which layers implement it. So maybe that layer is useful to you. You should pull in that layer probably. Um, and then to create a root file system, you create an image recipe, um, like the core image minimal shown above. You can create another one. Basically, an image is uh, like it's a collection of packages. So this is a very simple uh, image recipe. You do image install plus equal a list of packages. Well, not only packages, but also package groups. Well, the package groups is a subgroup of packages, so you can just include a package group for debugging and include that or, or not. Uh, so we, actually, uh, what Bitbake does, it, it builds packages, uh, and then from that, from, from it picks those packages that you listed in the image and installs them in the root file system. Okay, um, there are many uh, root file system customization that affect the whole system uh, and uh, build root has a really nice menu for that. So you just uh, enter menu config and system configuration and you will see options to change Im important things like the init system, the dev management, uh, passwords, um, root password and many, many more. So um, actually, what uh, happens is everything is stored in your configuration and is most important, it is very easy to find uh, all of those options in a menu. It's very handy. Uh, with the Octet, it's more difficult because uh, for each of the features, you have to find where it exists in which recipe. And so um, um, my, my personal algorithm to, to do that is first I look into the Yocto reference manual, which is very comprehensive. If I don't find it there, then I uh, grab into the pocket sources because maybe, maybe there is a variable which is not documented and it does what I need. Well, otherwise you just search the internet. Um, then uh, for, uh, I listed here just a very small selection of possible configuration. It, it, it would be too huge to list them all, uh, but starting from very basic and mundane things like setting the host name. Uh, in, this is high, the, the, the menu entry in build root on the left, so you just go in system configuration and find this uh, and set your host name. In Yocto you have to set this variable here which come from the base files recipe in, uh, in Pocky. Uh, this happens in similar ways for other um, settings. Okay, and well, uh, more important things are the init system, the dev management, and this really affects the whole system. Um, it, okay, this is just uh, a brief list uh, as an example. Okay, uh, then uh, if you need extra root file system or image modifications, then uh, build root has two tools. 
One is the root file system overlay directory or directories. Uh, you give it one or more directories and at, at the end of root file system creation, it will just copy your overlay over the root file system one by one. So it's actually uh, really an overlay of everything. It's typical for configuration files and similar that are global and not specific to a package. Uh, if that's not enough, you can ask it to run a, script, a post build or post image script. It will just be run after each of these two steps. Uh, it's, well, it's called script, but it can be any program actually. Uh, and then you can do everything on your root file system or your images. The same thing can be done in Yocto with the rootfs post process command and image post process command. It's very similar. Okay. Uh, I think I'm kind of or out of time, so um, there is probably time only for one question. Um, but uh, if you have more questions, I will be available uh, during office hour on Wednesday. Uh, on Well, it's in the built-in seating. It's just over here on the right. Uh, so I'll be available for an hour if you have additional questions. So. If there is a question now, I think we have time to reply. Yep. Um, I'm using the Yocto project at Open and Bird, but I have a few contributions to the stream of Google. Uh, I have this question. For some of the pro products that I've been working with, Yocto and Open and Bird, the customers require, re require not to include packages, uh, recipes with specific uh, license. And uh, Yocto provides us this mechanism to exclude uh, recipes with Okay, uh, the question is, in Yocto, I can ask it to explicitly exclude uh, recipes with a given license. Uh, how can I do it with Buildroot? Buildroot does not do that directly. Uh, actually, one of the, uh, uh, the, the thing is, uh, Buildroot typically is used to build a small to medium system where you have quite a good knowledge of what goes in your file system. So uh, you just have a look at your dependencies. Uh, Buildroot uh, on the other side can produce a very detailed uh, uh, reporting about uh, legal related information. You just do make space legal info. It will produce a directory with all the license files, uh, the, mm, the tarballs and so on. And also a report, a, a manifest, which is a CSV table with all packages on the target and all host packages and with their license and additional information. So you can look into that to see if you have any package with a uh, forbidden license. And it's a very useful tool. So you, you can do that uh, with a little manual intervention. Yes. Maybe just another question before we go. Okay. Oh, sorry, do we have? Feel for which is going to be more prevalent in the future? More? Which, which is going to be used more in the future by vendors? Which tool is going to be used more in the future by vendors? Well, uh, I really don't know. Uh, <laughs> um, I think Yocto is more used by vendors, uh, probably. Uh, yes, I think it's more used by vendors. However, this uh, disease uh, related also to the philosophy of the project. So with Yocto, it is very typical that each vendor has have their own layer. So nobody, uh, uh, they, are not, they don't have to go through a patch review process. They just put them, their things online and they are there. Uh, this is a pro and con, so they, they can publish freely, but on the other hand, there is no quality assurance and uh, complete testing. Um, with Buildroot, uh, most typically, uh, to implement a new platform, you don't need much in Buildroot. Uh, in most cases, you just need a dev config saying, pull the kernel from here, pull the bootloader from there. This is the configuration to use, and that's it. So uh, except for some more complex architectures, that's all you have to do. So uh, I think some vendors just don't do that because, I don't know, it doesn't look so uh, serious stuff like having a layer, but it's actually a matter of having a working kernel and a working bootloader. Well, and a good chain, of course. Okay, uh, time is out. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh,